Hey, I got a lot of projects going on here at the same time on this Camaro. But one of them I wanted to share is an uh, upgrade to the exhaust system, specifically the headers. These are the headers that I was running on the car. They uh, are pretty cool because they're engine swap headers by Hooker, and it makes it a lot easier uh, to, to do an engine swap on a car that didn't originally have a big block Chevy in it. Uh, but there's some limitations. They're designed for maybe a much smaller big block, um, so the inside diameter of these is around inch and seven eighths, I think. Um, I was able to modify and put V-band clamps on them, uh, change the angle of this lower tube before I had them coated, but obviously with them being ceramic coated, um, pretty tough to do maintenance on them. And ground clearance on these cars is always kind of an issue, so you can see these run a bit close to the ground and have taken some damage over the years. So I want to get the tube, the primary tube size up where it's supposed to be for my combination, which should be two and a quarter OD, which is about 44% bigger than these pipes. So that should be nice in the high end. That should uh, make a difference. And also um, tighten them up a little bit so that there is uh, fewer ground clearance issues. This is not a car where I think I'll be able to do an equal length header because there is just not a lot of room. And I do want to prioritize uh, minimizing the hot surface areas and keeping as much heat away from the floorboards and other things that could catch on fire. Um, just try to do the best job there as possible. So one of the first things I did was um, inspired by the aftermarket ice engine building blocks for building headers is I designed my own uh, snap together blocks and printed a whole bunch of them on my 3D printer. Um, these are for the two and a quarter OD tube and uh, the bend that I chose for this is uh, three and three eighths center line radius bend. So I printed a bunch of different angles, uh, 25 degrees, 15 degrees, 30 degrees, and a bunch of straight pieces as well that all snap together. And I also, I added like a verner around this so that as I rotate them and line up the marks, I can get really good resolution as to what the different angles are as the pieces are are uh, rotated and snapped together. I also printed flanges that bolt onto the big block Chevy headers. I didn't do it all as one one header flange, just as individuals, because uh, it's too big for my printer and it worked out nice this way. Similar, there's clocking on these flanges that allow me to know how far these tubes have been clocked from uh, a particular angle. And I focused mostly on those back three tubes. As you can see, Getting out and clearing the steering shaft is uh, a priority. And then getting down between that uh, slot, between the oil pan, um, the cross member, and the body, um, is a, it's a pretty tight slot. It was a tight fit for the two inch or inch and seven eighths tubes before. Um, it's a little bit trickier now at two and a quarter. Now before this header exited into a three inch tube, and I wanted to bump up to a more appropriate size for this car and this engine. And so I have a four inch tube and uh, obviously you might be saying like, okay, if you were having ground clearance issues with a three inch tube, how are you going to make a four inch tube fit? Um, I made some additional modifications to, to move some of this floorboard area up that I just went under before. Um, and so I should be able to tuck this four inch tube up in there as tight or tighter than the three inch tube was before. I should still have four inches of ground clearance up front, maybe just a bit more. Now I, I focused on those back three tubes as I said earlier and you can see where they come down. Um, what I did this first round is my goal was to just bring the tubes down and get them roughly pointed at where this collector is going to happen and where the tube's going to go. Ignoring the fourth tube for the number one cylinder because that one's going to be the easiest. It's kind of a straight shot. Uh, the reason I did that is I want to take these tubes, model them in the CAD, and then modify them in the CAD to have a better angle to hit this collector area um, and to make the changes in the CAD, right? Um, I don't have a coordinate measuring machine or anything to kind of scan the car and get all the data you would need to fully model these tubes in the car, but I think that's going to be okay. I'll show you one more angle here. This back tube has to kind of do a nice little curl to come down and go into the collector from this side, which is going to be good. It'll give it a little bit extra length. Um, but my goal also here was 
with these mock-ups is to push them out as far as I wanted them against the frame rail, knowing that when I get in the CAD, I can always bring them in this direction um, when I make little adjustments and tweaks to them, um, but that I can't go any further in this direction, right? I've kind of defined what my boundaries are. You see kind of a tight fit, so I did the same thing. I brought these tubes out as close to the objects, you know, that were constraints as I wanted them, so about a half inch away from this oil filter shield. Okay, so I showed you the headers and what I have going on out in the real world. Now we'll take a look at the CAD side of things. So I started out modeling this in CAD with the header flanges. These are actually the plastic ones that you saw bolted to the motor. So it's easy to reuse those parts you designed for 3D printing right in the CAD. Um, the next things to add are some of the tubes. So I'll show you what a tube looks like in here. Obviously for those of you that know CAD, this is pretty easy. It's a surface sweep of a circle following this line that is the center line radius of the tube. <clears throat> um, I modeled this in sections where each section is always a curve followed by a straight. Um, the straight of course is optional like down here. But what that allows you to do is to enter in each of the rotations, right? So you have a bend here of 80 degrees followed by a three inch straight. That's rotated 42 and a half degrees down from the header flange. Um, in, in the way that you can envision that tube pivoting. And then the next bend is on a different plane, right? So the next plane is 60 degrees to the original bend line, rotated counterclockwise in this case. And that's where the next curve, which is a 20 degree curve followed by a four and three quarter inch straight picks up, right? And so on down the tube. Now this is the most complicated tube. Most of the tubes are pretty easy. Um, but as I showed you with those plastic blocks, by having them marked off by their angles and then with the Werner on the edge being able to tell the degree of rotation from each bend plane, um, we can get a pretty good approximation of this tube into the CAD. Obviously we're working with plastic blocks that are snapped together and they're all hanging off the header flange. There's going to be errors, um, but it gives us somewhere to start. So let's take this back into the overall model got our header flanges. Here's what those back three tubes, the three, five, and seven tubes look like. And speaking of those minor errors, I mean, it's obvious that the plastic didn't intersect like this out there on the car. That's the result of, of just those minor variations. Um, and so we could tweak those or figure out which angle was off a little bit and correct them. Uh, but for now, I just put, plug them in there as is. Same thing for our uh, secondary, that four inch elbow, right? I just fit that in approximately where it belongs on the car. Now, one more thing before we start designing the collector. When I modeled these mock-up tubes in CAD, obviously the end angles are just kind of wherever, wherever things fit, wherever I could make them fit in the car, right? And so we can see this tube is, is really kind of angling in, whereas these are a little bit more straight um, and that's not kind of how we want them to come into the merge collector. So what I'm going to do when I get into the merge collector is essentially ignore the last bend on each one of these. Use the, the piece that precedes it to kind of set the direction, but it'll effectively allow me to make minor adjustments to these last tubes uh, to kind of have them come into the collector in a, a bit more symmetrical way. To start the collector design, I created a part to represent the collector. And the first thing I did in that part was create a 3D sketch and copied over the center lines of the 3, 5, and 7 tubes and the 4-inch tube here so we have some reference geometry. And we're going to add to that. On our merge collector, we want to merge down to the equivalent of a 3.5-inch tube diameter. 3.5 comes from 150% of the surface area of our primary tube, our 2.25-inch tube. That's going to give us our choke point. And then we want to transition back up to the merge. I chose a 10 degree angle because that's often in fluid dynamics, a diverging cone wall angle that doesn't induce separation. So those points are going to give us a little bit of reference geometry here, a plane for where that diverging cone starts. And we can use that same plane to sketch up the intersection of the four tubes, just roughly. There's our three and a half inch circle or two and a quarter inch primaries. And that is going to give us some target points 
for our next operation. All right, so sketches are getting kind of busy in there, but next thing I did is define a handful of planes. Now, I talked about ignoring the last curve on these tubes and gaining some, some flexibility in the assembly that way. So I'm going to use the preceding straight and the target point for the same tube to define a plane. And then on that plane, I can sketch a new curve with the same center line radius and a straight section that hits the target point. And you can see the difference between the mock-up blocks path, which is the gray line, and the new adjusted curve, just a slight difference there, a little bit different angle of the uh, you know total angle, and of course a little bit of separation there, a little bit different clocking on the previous tube. And if we sweep on that, then we get a nice tube that picks up where the last one left off and goes through our target point. Now I'll get rid of some of these sketches here so we can see. Do the same thing for the number five and the number seven tubes. Brings them in there. Now we ran them long because it's going to make it easier to trim them off later. And for the number one tube, we want to bring that one in and I wanted to have it level to keep as much ground clearance as possible. The other tubes have angle on them, so they're still merging with that tube. It's just this one tube happens to be parallel with the axis of the outgoing 4-inch tube. Now if we trim them all up, we start to see the overlap and we see that pattern again of the circles that we had drawn, drawn earlier. And then if we remove all the little pieces inside the tubes, we can see the merge appear. The next challenge is to take this clover shape and turn it into a round shape. So it needs to transition back to round to our three and a half inch round. And coincidentally, when I measured around these arcs, it turned out to be very close to, I think it's 11.995, the circumference of a three and a half inch diameter tube. So that's good. Otherwise, you need to adjust your angles a little bit uh, to get that because when you hammer these points out and bring this into a circular shape, if you don't have enough material around there, it's never going to match the three and a half inch diameter. So in order to transition this out, I set up a plane back a little ways from the end and trimmed it back and then lofted a shape out to our three and a half inch round. And I used a couple of guide curves to keep these straight because this material is actually going to come from the tube here. So we want to make sure that we have nice straight lines from all of those different tubes following this transition out to three and a half. And then from our three and a half, it was pretty simple to loft again out to our four inch. So now we've got a merge collector. Pretty cool. It's got two points inside of it instead of one because it's not a symmetrical merge. And we'll bring this back over to our driver's side header. And there we go. We got our revised transition from these tubes down into the merge. And something that's neat about this collector design is since I made it out of these curve and straight pieces that will be all one piece from the straight little segment up to the curve, all of the orange part can be welded fully together and it still leaves me access the whole way around uh, to fully weld the next tube as I work my way up the header. And of course I can do the same thing with this number one tube. Once I figure out what straights and curves come off of here to meet up with the cylinder head, then I can make sure that that tube has a straight and a, and a bend that gets me out here somewhere where I have uh, good access all the way around the tube. So the next thing I'll probably do with this is turn it up, I don't know, maybe something like this or maybe I'll get creative and slice it and 3D print out this orange part. And now I've got a mock-up collector that puts me in kind of the same place as where you would start if you used a prefabricated collector. And I can go back and revise these tubes a little bit, make any adjustments to them, and of course route that number one tube. And then I'll have a whole driver's side header design. I could repeat the same process on the passenger side, which I think should be a lot easier. There's a lot more room on that side. And uh, hopefully sometime soon start cutting out some stainless steel.